Hello, and Hi. welcome back to another episode of the Kano Gauntlet. I'm Elliot, returning with my lovely co-host uh, for the Gauntlet, Kaylee. Uh, and today, on the shocking block, is Bravo. Uh, Bravo is a young guardian hero, and he wields his trusty Anothos today, his two-handed hammer. Uh, I am also <laughs> wielding, or... Wearing, wearing, wearing. Yeah, adorned with uh, my tectonic plating uh, and three pieces of null rune equipment uh, to try to combat the wizard today. I've got the null rune hood, the gloves, and the boots. Um, yeah, the tectonic plating is there for some reason. Not sure. Um, maybe it's a mistake. Tell me in the comments if I should just be playing four uh, null rune pieces, or he should be. If I should be switching something for out uh, for something else or something, but uh, yeah, that's what I've got today. Yeah. Uh, how about yourself? Today I have my standard Kano loadout. Uh, we have Kano with his fancy Crucible of Aether Weave. Uh, we have this helmet with far too many gems in it. Uh, the talismanic lens, which lets us set up the top of our deck for Kano activations. We have our spring tunic, which is, it's a spring tunic. It's just good. Resource blocking, fantastic. Uh, Metacarpus node acts as a one-shot additional Crucible of Aether Weave. And Storm Striders lets us play a card from our hand at instant speed, making your turn our turn. She said she was going to say it every time. I'm going to say it every time. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, another I, thing that is happening every time. I won the die roll again. Mm -hmm. So we're making Elliot go first because Kano loves the uh, being on the second, on the draw. I was going to say on, on the draw. The, yeah, but that's a, but magic, that's a magic thing. Turn. It kind of is, though. Kano but... likes to go second. Yeah, there you go. Got it. First try. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at what my hand looks like today. Yuck. <laughs> um, I'm going to pitch this staunch response uh, to make a seismic surge with this tectonic plating. Sure. And then I'm going to, oh, sorry, it's a blue staunch response. So I will have two resource floating after that, um, but it's not gonna matter too much because I'm going to pitch a blue crush the weak uh, to attack with Anothos for six. For six, I'm going to defend for five and take one. Got there. One. One down, 14 First to go. blood. <laughs> uh, I will arsenal this last card. Does Kano cause blood if he's burning you? Does it cauterize immediately? I don't want to think about <laughs> it, actually. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> anyway, first blood from the hammer. Oh, well, that's a good point too. Yeah. The hammer probably just like Blushes. causes like contusions. Yeah, like it's internal bleeding. Man. This completely got derailed so quickly. <laughs> We've got spring tunic trigger, mm -hmm. goes to one. We are then going to play this red stir the aether winds, pitching an eye of Ophidia. So I get the, pit, uh, the opt two when I pitch it mm -hmm. and I have one resource floating. I'm gonna leave both of these cards on top. Yikes, don't like that. We are then going to follow that up by spending this last resource to activate our Crucible of Aetherweave for plus one arcane damage. Then we are going to pitch a Gaze the Ages to play a blue Aether Spindle to uh, two arcane damage plus the three from our Stir plus the one from our Crucible. So this is coming in for six, and then I get to opt to X where X is the damage dealt to you. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, I did opt two, so I kind of know what's there, but right. we got to opt to bigger. 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 Um, I will pitch this blue crush confidence to barrier three of it. All right. Take uh, three. Take three. And I will opt three. I'm going to keep the same two cards from before on top, but put that third card on the bottom. Ooh, that's derived information. She didn't have derived? to tell me that. I didn't have to tell you that, <laughs> but that's fine. And I will pass the turn. Uh, start of my turn here. Seismic, Seismic surge. surge. Breaks. Don't think that's going to be mattering today this turn, but uh, whatever. Uh, I'm going to start this turn with a, uh, an interesting one. I'm gonna come at you with this zealous belting, uh, pitching this cranial crush. So I have one resource floating, and this is an attack for five, and because cranial crush has higher uh, attack than zealous belting's base attack, this has go again. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Coming at you for five. I will defend for six. Fair enough. 
Um, I will use this resource to remake a seismic surge, I suppose. Uh, might as well not waste it. Uh, and then I will uh, come at you with the... Oh, I guess that technically does break the combat Does break chain the chain. Well. Sorry. Uh, and then I will attack you with this Anothos, pitching this showtime. So uh, that so is for, for six. six. Yeah. I will take the six. Love it. Loving that for me. I'm down to eight. Okay. Uh, that's my turn. Tunic to two. Mm-hmm. Trusty tunic. Trusty. Then we are going not to... Not rusty. Not rusty. Trusty. Trusty. How does a piece of cloth get rusty? Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to, it's a very simple turn. We're going to pitch this blue centering foresight to nourishing emptiness. Not again, he says, fooling you into a false sense of security. Do you have the defense reaction? I'd like to block with this. Do you have any attack reactions? I have no attack reactions. (laughs) Staunch response. Pitching this righteous cleansing. (laughs) I'd like to block for seven. Yeah, it's going to (laughs) happen. All right. Uh, that is my turn. Great. like that. Love that. Uh, this gets a battle war encounter. Uh, start of the turn here. Seismic surge breaks. Don't think uh, I care about that too much. I'm just gonna, gonna try to push my advantage a little more here. Uh, I'm going to play from my arsenal this tear asunder, uh, pitching this stamp authority. Uh, so my next guardian attack will get plus one, dominate, and if it hits you, discard two cards. Okay. And then I will attack with this Anothos, uh, pitching this unmovable. So I did actually have uh, both uh, defense reactions. <laughs> kind of upset by that. That's No, stop it. Um, and th- those both do have cost three. So yep. um, that's four, five, six from its own ability, seven from this with dominate. And if it hits you, discard two cards. And you're at... You're at 17. I'm at 17. It's a pretty big number. I will take seven and go to one. Yes. And discarding please. a other nourishing emptiness and a blue Voltic Bolt. Okay. Um, yeah, that kind of terrifies me. Um, I have nothing left to do, though, so I'll, I'll pass my turn. All right. Start of my turn. Tuna goes to three. I'm going to pitch this energy potion for three resource to activate Crucible and then Voltic Bolt you for six. Six, huh? Uh, I will do the thing once more. The thing once more? Yes, I will barrier three of the six. Take three? Take three. And that will be everything for my turn. Okay. So for those of you that uh, don't follow us from our magic content, you might not know uh, about this, but we we here at the Spike Feeders, we have a little bit of a saying, uh, and it goes something along the lines of, uh, what are we doing if we're not going for it. Ah. So in the spirit of going Going for for it, it. I'm going to be obscenely greedy as usual. Uh, I'm going to pitch this showtime to uh, Bravo's ability uh, to give the next uh, attack with three or greater dominate. And then uh, with the one resource floating from that and three more from this blue disable, I'm going to attack you with a dominated debilitate. For six. Dominated to debilitate. Yes. And I'm at one? You are at one. So in theory, I believe if you have a three block in your hand and the tunic, you are taking two. Correct. So I need you to be able to not do 14 to me. I have no cards in hand, no resource floating. I'd like to break my talismanic lens. You would. I would. I will. <laughs> I'm going to opt one card to the top and one card to the bottom. Okay. We are then going to pitch a blue Whispers of the Oracle to activate Kano. Mm-hmm. Exile or banishing this lesson in lava. That's scary, yeah. From that, we are going to use our tunic resource to activate our Crucible of Aether Weave. Okay. Then we are going to pitch this Forks Lightning to play this lesson in lava, pitching Tome of Aether Weave to activate our Metacarpus notes. This is coming in for five arcane damage. Okay. Um, I have, yeah, no resource floating or anything in my hand, so I'll take this five. Take this five. If Lesson in Lava deals damage, I can search my deck for a wizard card with cost less than or equal to the damage dealt by Lesson in Lava and put it on top. Okay. I'm going to find a Blazing Aether. This isn't lethal. You're winning this game, but I'm doing the fancy things. (laughs) Okay. I love that. (laughs) That's good for me. (laughs) This Blazing Aether goes on top. 
Mm -hmm. I'm then going to pitch this other Whispers of the Oracle to activate Kano, X or banishing this uh, Blazing Aether, which I can then play for free and deal X arcane damage to you, where X is the amount of arcane damage I have dealt this turn, which is currently five. I will take five more. And then I die to this debilitate that is waiting very patiently to resolve. <laughs> very patiently on the stack. Bravo's Hang on. fist. Defend for one with tunic. No. <laughs> I take five and I die. Uh, that was closer than I even thought it was going to be. <laughs> I was like considering just playing out this showtime, you know, like going and getting something, arsenaling it, and then like trying again the next turn because this lets me draw an additional card oh. um, when it, it breaks in my uh, beginning of my action phase. But yeah, with you at one, I, I just felt like I had to go for it that turn. You giving the attack dominate is really what made things awkward. Right. Because this was the hand I drew. What I wanted to be able to do was defend for six, Ars uh, probably play this to just like draw two cards and arsenal it, or arsenal either the Fork Lightning or something. Right. Uh, and then have a fresh hand with the Fork Lightning and Arsenal to hopefully Storm Striders it and then damage and stacking of things and try to kill you. Yeah. That was the ideal. But the fact that I could still do 10 off of this awkward hand yeah. <laughs> was still kind of great. And I think the card we bottomed, the other option was off of this opt, we hit, uh, it was Lesson in Lava and a Blue Reverberate. So the other line I was trying to look for was, can we pitch to Kano Reverberate with the pluses to make it three damage and they get a free Forks Lightning off of it. Right. But that still would have only been seven damage. So actually the Lesson in Lava line was more damage, mm -hmm. but still not lethal. Yeah. But so, yeah. Bravo hit me upside the head with a hammer. Yeah. I mean, we've been, we've played this matchup a little bit and uh, I guess uh, we can, we can pull the curtain again. This is actually a re-recording. Uh, just as I thought I we were not doing that. Around. Well, we can do whatever we want. We don't <laughs> have to talk about it. Um, yeah, Kaylee slapped me around pretty good in a, a couple of our other matchups against Bravo. So, you know, I, I don't think she's too choked up about this. Not really. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got to squeak out another one. So it, it helps my fragile ego. There you go. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, any other thoughts or anything about? Not really about one? this game. Yeah. Make sure to tune in uh, for the next week's game. Yeah, we'll be wrapping up the Kano Gauntlet. So uh, join me and my fragile ego and Kaylee again next week. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night. Hey, thanks for checking out the Spike Feeders on YouTube. Before you close the window, make sure you click subscribe for more great flesh and blood content.